Let me give it a second. Let some people come in here. <clears throat> So Warren Buffett's business partner, one sec here, new setup. So Warren Buffett's business partner, Charlie Munger. What's up, man? So Warren Buffett's business partner, Charlie Munger, is working on this new social experiment where it's one structure, 4,500 people living inside of this one building, and there's only two doors. There's two doors, there's almost no windows, and 4,500 tenants inside. I'm running the numbers on this, and essentially they're building like a prison, but the amount of money that he's going to make in this social experiment is unbelievable. And I actually think this model is probably going to become more and more used in the time to come. So take a look at how this whole thing works out. It's, it's unbelievable. It's crazy. So... Two doors, few windows, and 4,500 students. The architect quits. The architect walks out and says, in quotes, that it's an unknown impact in the lives of personal development. It's a social and psychological experiment. And how this works, they're spending $1.5 billion for the project, of which Munger's contributing $200 million. So they're, he's going to issue a $200 million grant to UCSB, um, University of University of uh, Santa Barbara in California, and how this how these figures work out. So we're looking at right now the dorms in Santa Barbara, eleven fifty, a thousand eight hundred seven. Right, they go all the way up to they go all the way up fifteen hundred. Let's just use a a straight number of a thousand dollars, one thousand dollars per dorm. How this is going to work for them in terms of numbers? is unbelievable. So you have 4,500, right? So you have 4.5 million per month, right? Times 12. It's going to pull in annual gross income, right? Operating expenses, we can put 30%. Vacancy, it's a college, which... I have a very, very hard time believing that they're going to have some extreme vacancy rate. Traditionally, what these universities generally do is that they'll have a backlog to where they already have a tenant selected for the room, you know, two, three, four, five, six months in advance. And when the tenant moves out, they're simply just going to reassign them. But we can even put a, you know, a 5% vacancy rate in there, which is very high, right? I know net income, $35 million. We put a cap rate of, say, Santa Barbara, say 4% cap rate, $897 million would be the cost, that property values cost. So essentially, what will happen in this business model is Buffett's contributing $200 million. The project costs $1.5 billion, allegedly, and they essentially would get their entire investment back in passive income in probably five years. So... Right now, it's pulling in you know $35 million in net income a year. Yeah, I mean, in no time, in absolutely no time, they're going to make their money back. The property's value is $897 million at a four cap. But I honestly believe the operating expenses are going to be much less than that because what's happening here is if their rooms are, if it's 4,500 students in this structure and they have... One point, <coughs> I think it was one point two five million square feet. <coughs> Let's see here. It is one point six eight million square feet. So. Three hundred seventy-three square feet per person, right? But what happens with this is you have to factor in hallway space, you have to factor in uh, staircases, you factor in all this, 
It's probably 175 feet per person. So a micro unit in LA, a micro unit in most places, a micro unit might be 350 to 400 square feet for a micro unit. They're gonna have tiny, tiny structures with no windows. They're literally bringing in solar panels, like how they're structuring this, these lights is what they're gonna be bringing in for the most part. That's the only light that's gonna be coming in here. And how it works out is as an interior drawing of Munger's Hall, the University of California, UC Santa Barbara, 11 stories, 1.68 million square foot structure to house 4,500 students has faced criticism from a member of the university's resign and they resigned. But the cash flow on this asset is unbelievable. $35 million in that cash flow every single year on this building. The property value is they're basing it if these numbers are correct, I don't think operating expenses are 30% on student housing when the when the structure is one story with no windows, the operating expenses are gonna be very minimal and they're not gonna have a 5% vacancy rate. It will probably be closer to like a, a 3% vacancy rate and operating expenses might be somewhere closer to 25. Regardless, you know, $40 million annual net income a year, roughly a billion dollar valuation on this asset. It is genius in terms of the money that they're gonna make, but it's it's pretty disgusting, in my opinion, to have everyone packed inside one place with no windows and only two doors. You know, God forbid there was a fire or some type of issue, how would you get 4,500 people out of there with just two doors? Two doors, few, few windows, and 4,500 students. So what this, I think, is gonna happen is that this is a really good sample for them to see you know, if this model will get passed, they're gonna they're gonna replicate and scale this model out more and more and more again. It is a dystopian nightmare. I agree, Lynn. You know, they'll begin scaling this model out, and as affordability becomes a real problem. Right now, it's not just there. It, it's going to be there, I think, in a year or two when it becomes a real problem. We could have developers all over the country building these types of structures, where you know they're offering these units at six hundred. 500, 600, 700 dollars per unit, and people are doing it. So they'll be in debt for life, borrowing money to live in a homeless shelter. University is great. Yep. Um, these closets for young people with no natural light. What could go wrong? Getting generation smart made of spaces. I'm gonna live in a Montage Laguna. Yeah. So um, Munger, vice president of Berkshire, has donated hundreds of millions. That's the the beautiful thing about money is you just you donate, you have grants, and then things just seem to pass and you seem to just bypass all these problems. The university's high school is to build school facilities he designed himself, but the amateur architect's latest idea for a mostly windowless mega dorm to be built on the University of California, Santa Barbara's campus faced objection this week when the university architecture consultant quit calling the plan unsupportable from my perspective as an architect, parent, and a human being. Dennis McFarden, a Los Angeles architect and member of the University Design Review Committee of 15 years, wrote in his resignation letter that he was disturbed by the 11-story, 1.68 million square foot building with just two entrances. The massive dorm would home 4,500 students, 94% of whom would not have windows in their compact single occupancy bedrooms. It's disgusting. McFadden called the dorm the wrong answer to the need for more housing, raising the, <clears throat> raising the question of how much authority wealthy donors have when it comes to planning the buildings their names are etched on. Are the visions of a single donor to the building is a social and psychological experiment with an unknown impact on the lives and personal development of the undergraduates the university serves? McFadden wrote, in the letter just reported by student-run newspaper Daily Nexus and community outlet, the Santa Barbara Independent. Munger has no formal architecture training, says he's unfazed by McFadden's objections, telling the Washington Post that this is not some crazy idea. He said his plan has been in the works for years and compared virtual windows that would simulate sunlight in the dorm rooms to Disney cruise ships. Huh. Yeah, so 
I, uh, it's unfortunate. What we've all realized over the last, you know, 18 months, 24 months is how much authority money brings you, especially when you're a big donor. Now, Munger, he's been donating, building libraries. And I've, I've read his book many years ago, uh, Poor Charlie's Almanac. It was a really good book. And one thing that he emphasized in this book is always do right, always do the right thing and build out business models that are honest and true. But it's interesting to see, you know, how his perception has changed over the years, because to me, this business model isn't the one built around the lives of really around the ideas of making everyone's life better. It's built on the lives of controlling people and having absolute dictatorship over the lives of these students and doing so in a way to use his power through UCSB to force that college to fill those dorm rooms. And are they gonna rent those units for a thousand bucks? No way. I think those units are probably rent for a lot more. If you look at the shacks that they're renting right now for you know, 1,000, 1,200, 1,300, if you're working and contributing $200 million to UCSB, what's ultimately gonna happen is when people enroll, that's where UCSB is gonna be forcing the students right into Munger's dorms. They might be able to rent those units for, I mean, if you play with the numbers, look at it. If, it, if they can rent these units for, let's say 1,500, right? Let's say 1,500 bucks a door, or a bed, what ultimately would happen is that 4,500? Times 12, $81 million. And then you, you look at how this all changes. Annual gross income, 1.473 billion is how much that would be worth. So if they can get those units to you know, 1500 bucks a door, it's worth one point, roughly 1.5 billion. And Munger's putting in 200 million. So you think about the actual return on equity for him. He's putting up 200 million. The college is definitely going to get a very, very low interest loan, probably grants and get you know, government assistance to build this out. And then ultimately, he's going to be riding cash flow at levels that he wouldn't be able to receive in like a, in a Coke stock or, um, you know, buying it buying company share back or buybacks through Berkshire or anything like that. He's going to make a killing on this. It's an unfortunate situation. I think we're going to start to see this, this experiment unroll or really unravel over the next couple of years. And I think that's going to hit all the big colleges throughout, you know, UCSB, uh, really all the uh, UC campuses throughout California. If this works here and they can show a proof of concept, it's going to be scalable and it's going to be built out. What do you guys think about this? Look at the fires at the turn of the century in New York. There's a reason this type of housing. Yeah, it's a very big, big danger. Because what happens, hypothetically, what would what would happen if they had a situation where there was a fire in that building? If there was a fire in that building, then they would have a situation where you would have a whole a lot of students that couldn't get out. There was no windows. They can't get out of the window. So if those windows, if those doors were broken or not functional and there was a fire in there, it would be an absolute tragedy, really a tragedy. So I just can't believe that they got the approval to do something like this. It's, it's crazy because if you were to go through, like for example, I was building a property in LA and what happened to me over a parking spot, we had plenty of parking, like five spots. We had ample parking, but the city would not give us the approval because they said, oh, you don't have enough parking. It cost me another $30,000 to build out this entire driveway and go through all of these hurdles because they said we didn't have enough parking. But somehow this can, can pass because you have the money and you have the authority. And I don't have the authority to where I can just bypass parking restrictions and regulations. <clears throat> Critics say the massive dorm is a psychological experiment. Think of it like a cruise ship, says the billionaire who helped designed it. Dormzilla, a ship on land, an experiment. You know, this also would do something really interesting is that I think what this would do is that this would also break people's spirits. When you live in a, in a dorm room with no window, you ever, like, think about it like this. If someone goes to jail and then they put them in a solitary confinement type situation, right? Put them in solitary confinement, 
after 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, it really starts to wear on their spirits. Now, when you have a college kid that moves into one of these dorm rooms for two years, three years, what would that do long-term to their personality? Could it potentially make them more submissive? Could that break their confidence? Could that, we don't know. We don't know, but we're going to do a, a huge experiment and we're going to see the impacts of this huge experiment on 4,500 students. What they're saying here is that, let's see here, hold on. Munger is well-respected. Munger is well-respected for his business acumen. It's very interesting how they, um, that's the other thing too, is when you have the money, you can, you can control the narrative and how everything is displayed. So he's well-respected for his business acumen, but he's getting some pushback on his proudness as an amateur architect. Munger is not an architect himself. And so you know they can always just reframe this as it's something that he just doesn't understand what he's doing. And you know this is just his best effort when it's just not true at all. You know He's very, very, very bright. He was an attorney for many years until he was like 38 years old. Then he met Buffett and everything has been, you know, Everything has picked up quite well for him ever since that. But Los Angeles architect, we already talked about that. Students will live in eight-person living units that are sealed environments with no exterior windows and shared space or in 94% of the bedrooms. The eight people per living unit. That is disgusting. That's like a third world... And UCSB is not cheap. If you want to go to UCSB, the cost to go there, let's see how much that is. Fifty-seven thousand. So, how much is the tuition for years? Students who are admitted in the fall twenty twenty-one estimate tuition fifty-seven thousand for residents, one hundred eighty thousand for out-of-state students. Yeah, so fifty-seven thousand a year. You're going to drop two hundred, and if you're out of state, it's not it's not cheap. So you're going to imagine that you you send your kid, you're going to send them there. I mean, it is a big party school. I actually went to a Halloween party there. What was that? Uh, two thousand five, two thousand six. And it was an incredible Halloween party. I mean, the whole street, everything was like blocked off. It was, it was awesome. It was an awesome experience. But, um, you know, that was 15 years ago. My friend attends a school that she shares a firm with eight others. Massive generators, airflow. Um, <clears throat> yeah. My main thing with that is, is it, it's just going to be a big safety concern when you have 4,500 people, no windows and two doors. Um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty interesting. We're going to see how that all unfolds. What do you guys think? Do you think this is going to continue to spread with more dorm room style housing projects popping up in all these different cities, these different locations? You'll own little, pay a lot. Yep. Yeah, they definitely will. And they're going to get all the tax rebates. They're going to that's the thing is like when you have money at that level, and I don't have that type of money, when you have like a billion, two billion, three billion dollars, the money almost becomes useless, but the connections, they end up buying you everything that you want. Those connections will get anything done for you. You know, Warren Buffett, if he wants to get something done, he'll get it done. It, it, same thing with Munger, same thing with all these big guys. But if anyone, anyone here in this chat, we tried to go put together some type of housing project with a hundred people with two exits and few windows, it would get shut down. Not, not talking 4,500 people, just a hundred rooms or a hundred occupants. It would get shut down as a fire hazard. It's all about what you'll put up with. It's an attempt to make mainstream housing prices here are already ridiculous. Yep. Just keep obeying. Yeah. Everything is, uh, everything is ridiculously overpriced right now. And it's it's interesting to see how this is all going to transpire over the next couple of years, especially as we begin just printing more and more money. But for me, I think that colleges are going to lose. They already have lost a lot of their credibility. And I think over the next couple of years, colleges are going to become more and more useless where people realize that the traditional four-year education doesn't get you the job confidence and job security it once got you. Yep. 
But uh, yeah, I want to hop on this live stream and kind of give you guys an update on this. It, it's it's fascinating to me to see how something like this could could pass and how it's just how this whole thing is just it's all just happening. 1.68 million square feet. It's crazy to me. Psychological experiment. <laughs> it's nuts. All right, guys. I'll see you guys on the next live stream.